I don't know if he is, but I don't think so. I'll find out later, needless to say. Burv is over at the parking lot, parking people's cars and making sure that those cars are still there when the service is over. On the one hand, he serves so well in the ministry, but he sees no no hesitancy or contradiction or, or something beneath him to be out there in good weather and bad weather, in storm and in rain and in sunshine, helping people park their cars and needing to miss the service because, because that's where he's serving. See, it doesn't matter what you do. It's for whom you do it that really matters. He's going to be shocked to discover that he was a sermon illustration today, so <laughs> take it easy on him. But we love him and, and praise God for his leadership. Second big lesson is that faithfulness in one responsibility leads to greater faithfulness in another. You say, well, what was more important, waiting on tables or preaching the word? The answer is they were equally important, but preaching the word undoubtedly has greater responsibility. The Bible is clear about that. There's a difference between equal importance and equal responsibility. The preaching of the word, the Bible is clear brings much more condemnation if it's not done well and accurately and truthfully. But, but still, in terms of importance, in terms of importance, all of these things were equally important, the waiting on the tables. But isn't it interesting what God did? He took two people. Stephen was one of the ones that was chosen, and next week we're going to discover that he was the first martyr. And I've already been working on that sermon, you know, when he dies and looks into heaven. As the young people would say, I'm excited about it already. I'm pumped, as they would say. <laughs> Next week's sermon. He becomes the first martyr, and Philip, God bless him, becomes the first evangelist. And we're going to be talking about him the next week. God says, you're faithful in waiting on tables. Ah. I have someone here I can now trust with greater responsibility, the ministry of the word. I can entrust him with the courage to die for Jesus because he was faithful. You know, the Bible says that those who serve, and these are really deacons, even though the name isn't mentioned, the word isn't mentioned, but a deacon means a servant. It says, they have used the office of a deacon or a servant well. They purchase for themselves a good degree, great boldness in faith which is in Jesus Christ. Jesus said this regarding money. He said, if I cannot trust you with that which is a little thing, pardon me, Jesus, did I hear you right? Money, a little thing? I once had someone in another church. This is a true story. I guess it was one of those taters. He used to say, oh, you know, money isn't first, but it beats whatever comes second. Shame on him. Jesus said it's a little thing. He says, if I can't trust you with a little thing, if you get jittery when there's an offering taken at the church or when there's a desire for us to see God do something wonderful so that we can build a building, if you get nervous about this, who's going to entrust to you the true riches, said Jesus? If you can't wait on tables, how are you going to preach? There's a final word and lesson, and that is that we don't receive, we don't give, I should say, until we receive. The choir sang so beautifully, come to the fountain, come to the water, come to receive everlasting life. And we already gave you that opportunity because salvation is free. It's given to needy sinners who know how bad off they are. But... Having been saved, we are called to ministry, called to involvement, not to be spectators, but to say, oh God, here's my talent, here's my time, here's my treasure, here's all of me. As we fall at his feet and say, God, use us in whatever way we desire. If we were all spirit-filled, Marching in the victory of the resurrection Christ, Chicago would know about us. Well, yes, my friend, Chicago would know about us, and the people in your community would know about you. Wouldn't it be wonderful if indeed our churches were filled with spirit-filled people 
who knew God, who had wisdom, who were willing to do anything, even the most humble task, and in that humility and brokenness to understand God's guidance and direction, leadership and strength, that we might march forward for his name. And by the way, we live in very difficult days when the church needs to be the church. It is more urgent than ever. Can't help but listen to the uh, headlines on the news. Can't help but read what is happening in Washington before we begin to know that we as a nation desperately need the church. America needs churches filled with the Holy Spirit with a clear mission of the gospel, living it out at great personal cost, and in so doing, representing Jesus Christ here and to the ends of the earth. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Dr. Erwin Lutzer has concluded He Owns Our Status, the sixth message in his series, When God is First, taken from the book of Acts. Tomorrow we'll learn that when God is first, He owns our future. Running to Win comes to you from Chicago's Moody Church to help you understand God's roadmap for your race of life. When God is First is a series designed to help all of us order our priorities. This eight-part series can be yours on cassette, CD, or MP3. For full information, call toll-free 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Ask about when God is first. Visit our website at runningtowin.org. And don't forget, Running to Win is supported by listeners like you. This is Dave McAllister. Join us for tomorrow's edition of Running to Win.